other process that I've been talking about, namely low energy nuclear reactions. Mm-hmm. The reason mm-hmm. they're ignoring it, and to some extent they're correct, it has it has been problematic. It, in other words, it's not screaming out uh, that okay, we've solved all the problems. Now, either they don't believe it, and in many cases they don't. Okay, or they they assimilated the idea that it's nonsense and they're not working on it, or they see that there are indeed a lot a lot of problems, and there are. So what is going to cure, what is going to turn around in that particular area of new energy? The only thing that can turn that around is the emergence in the field of a robust device of some kind. So some venture capitalist and or uh, a philanthropist, Mm -hmm. I hope for the philanthropist much more than I hope for venture capitalists. I think most venture capitalists are significantly brain dead. Listen, (laughs) all you have to realize is that they've, pissed off, pardon my French, uh, huge quantities of money in the dot-com fiasco, yes, right? Yes, yes. All right? They got burned there. A minor fraction of that money, an infinitesimal fraction of that money, might well have solved the entire coal fusion research problem. Mm-hmm. But try to get those people to the well. Believe me, we've set up yes. all kinds of attempts to get venture capital in. Some has flown in. And they don't, right. they don't understand it, first of all. Right. Well, 20, first of all, 20 or $30 million was invested and wisely so, in my opinion, into the Black Light Power Corporation of Cranberry, New Jersey. Okay, the one you just mentioned. Which is linked to our website. We link yeah. to their website. And they have spectacular results that are, are like clockwork, predictable. Now, there should be hundreds of millions of dollars put into that company. Not not just, uh, you know, 10, 20, 30 million dollars. I mean, this... This stuff that, that Dr. Mills and company is working on is fantastic. Because what happens when they run out of funds? Well, indeed, what happens when they run out of funds? And they have routinely, are routinely attacked by the academic government complex. There are people who literally monitor them. We know who they are, okay? Robert Park of the American Physical Society, uh, nitwit if there ever was one. He wrote the book called Voodoo Science, which debunks, supposedly debunks coal fusion, complementary medicine, Blacklight Power Corporation's work. Everything that this nitwit doesn't understand is debunked. Okay, don't hold back at all here. No, I won't. I'll be, I'll be a little more uh, blunt about it in the future. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, money is indeed a choking point. I don't want to be crass about it and say, look, send money. Uh, this will solve the problem. We still have issues that won't be solved, but believe me, these coal fusion researchers and the Blacklight Power Corporations of the world and the vacuum energy people that I'd like to talk about soon, uh, the Koreas in, in Canada, uh, Toronto, Canada, uh, they're basically starving for money for the kind of work that could take us rather quickly in many cases, particularly in the vacuum energy area, from no visibility to extreme visibility. Quickly, too. Well, now, what about my question from last hour right. about a clandestine government operation going on somewhere right. where they're doing this right now? All right. Well, uh, it's oh, anything is possible. For example, I'm not going to get into the UFO question, which I find to be very interesting. I'm, I'm very no, but I will ask you an alien question yeah, that, that has to do with... Let me do that now and get it out of the way. Sure, if, if if there were an alien civilization, and there certainly are, uh, a hundred, uh, okay, a hundred thousand years ahead of us, uh-huh. what kind of energy sources do you think they'd be using? Vacuum energy. There's no question about it. Okay. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt, zero doubt in my mind, and I'm the author of the Starflight Handbook, a very mainstream, uh, technical, popular book on on the interstellar flight. By the way. Uh, uh, I, I would say all the proposals uh, that I, I and Dr. Matloff collected in that book are rather obsolete. We wrote that book in 19. Well, and vacuum energy is also called space energy, right? Space energy, ether energy. There is an ether. That's the bottom line. There is an ether pervading space. It is not the ether that was uh, dismissed properly, the electromagnetic ether that the uh, Mike, Michelson-Morley experiment of 1887. Or the kind that puts us to sleep. Or the kind that puts us to sleep. There's a pervading mass-free energy in all of the universe. There's no such thing as a Big Bang, by the way, uh, of the highly uh, questionable theory. Ooh, I may want to ask you that by the time we're off the air. Right, tonight. okay. Basically, ether energy is at the root of everything. It created, the ether, is responsible for the creation and destruction of matter. It is responsible for life itself. Okay, all particles are made of ether. They are not little hard things. They are 
the things that we call particles today, electrons and protons and so forth, are nothing but uh, special geometries of the mass-free ether that are in a form that makes them have an inertial quality. In other words, makes them have mass. But the largest body of energy in the universe is definitely the vacuum. The vacuum is where it is. Some people have called the energy or have interpreted it from physics perspectives as you said, zero-point energy. I don't believe that that theory, the zero-point energy theory, is the proper ether theory. But it, it's nonetheless a good uh, starting point. But th the bottom line is there are devices today on this planet in, in laboratories, not, not in government laboratories, that, uh, not, I mean, <laughs> I don't know whether the government has these things. I doubt that they do, but okay, maybe they have them. But the the... the individuals and research teams working on devices that do not employ hydrogen for anomalous nuclear reactions, but employ nothing but electrical discharges and uh, collections of what Reich had called orgone energy. Mm -hmm. These things are absolutely real. They have been verified. There is theoretical foundation for them. I have observed these experiments. I attest to them. Uh, there's even a new form in the latest issue of our magazine, uh, issue number uh, 53. Does this come out every month or bimonthly? Uh, uh, bimonthly. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's titled Solar Power by Day and by Night. Now, the, Dr. Paulo and Alexandra Correa in the Toronto, Canada, have managed to create uh, a special type of what Reich would have called an orgone accumulator, but they call it a hybrid orgone accumulator that sits I I around the clock generating power in a small Stirling engine. I I've worked with them, by the way, to uh, calibrate to make sure that the experiments are being done properly. They go round the clock running a Stirling engine as though, as though there were a source of two watts of thermal energy inside the metal Faraday cage. Now, that's vacuum energy for sure. Someone's going to get a Nobel Prize one day for Someday, this. Someday, yes. Now, anyways, very quickly, as we approach the bottom here, government, maybe they're working on this? Maybe not? What are they doing? I, there have been some programs. For example, NASA had a public program, an advanced propulsion program, in which they entertained ideas of zero-point energy, vacuum energy. But 